Hello, um, I'm Seo. Um, we're for Best Protocol. As you might, might know, we make RT and uh, which powers RT.cpan and uh, GPT, which Jesse or Audrey just gave a talk about. Um, we also make SVK, which is a version control system based on subversion. And uh, I'm going to talk about our new tool, uh, new new toy called PushMe. It's a subversion replication system uh, based on SVK. So, something weird. Hmm. All right. So. Um, modern software development, like nowadays people write software in, um, a lot of people start to using a test-driven development. So they write out tests uh, either before write, actually writing the code or when they find the bug. So they write a test first to see um, if the thing is uh, actually working as expected and uh, will prevent uh, regression in the future. And most of the, uh, not just open source development, um, in, in lots of software corporates, that they are actually having geographically distributed teams to work on software. And this too makes version control very important because um, you can use version control system um, in a distributed manner so um, people can work across the continents to commit to the same repository. And also you can make sure that a particular revision is, reprodu uh, is able to be um, used for re reproducing a, a specific pop problem or bug. And you can make sure you actually fixed it. So this brings us to subversion. Who here use subversion? Um, who loves subversion? Who hates subversion? <laughs> who wrote subversion? <laughs> well, I'm a commuter, so. My <laughs> okay, so uh, briefly introduce introduction about subversion. It basically, it has ni nice stuff such as version uh, directories. So imagine in CVS, you can't really like rename the directory or, uh, so basically in CVS, it's a big hack for putting together a lot of RCS files. And it's mostly file-based. So in subversion, you can actually version directories and renames, rather than uh, going into the repository to hack on the um, internal formats, and you can actually version rename directories. And also, in, in the old days of CVS, if you try to commit uh, free files in one commit, it's actually three commits. So if your network breaks or your computer crashed uh, between the three files being committed, you might end up in an inconsistent state where you have two files being committed, but one failed. So your tree might not be beautiful at all, or uh, it's not what you expected. But in subversion, it's actually uh, atomic. So basically, when you perform a commit of three files, it either fails um, or it success with three files being committed. So um, there's a transaction thing there, so making sure it's actually happening correctly as you expected. And it has very nice branch and tagging. Which, um, so in CVS, um, since it's file-based, and when you create a branch or a tag, it's basically marking something in each of the files. So the time and space it takes is actually linear to the number of files you have in the repository, which is a little bit awful when you have a four gig repository, trying to actually make a tag will probably take a day. And if someone commits in between, hmm, you're in big trouble. So um, this also makes people not really using branch feature in CVS at all. So um, because it's so hard to use and it's like taking so much time, you have to spend more time on the tool rather than on development. Um, Subversion also provides offline data. So uh, when you're offline, you can do like little things. You can't really commit offline, of course, because it has to go back to the repository. But uh, at least you can do a diff, so you can see what you have changed since you check out. And they do it in a rather expensive manner, which I'll explain later. But um, which is a great, great improvement already over CVS, because when CVS uh, check out, when you want to just see uh, what has changed since you check out, you have to, you have to be con connected to the repository. And Subversion also has a, a, a very great and active community, uh, which is usually quite friendly and well, sometimes quite friendly, and <laughs> which is quite nice. Um, so Subversion 1.0 was released around 2003, and it has gradually become an enterprise standard for distributed development. And it fixed a lot of severe problems I just described. Branching is easy, so people start actually, actually start using branching and merging. Mm, shocking. However, it's centralized. Um, centralized meaning it's a single point of failure. So when your repository is like busted something, then your, all your developer can, cannot be, uh, can, cannot actually commit anything or perform any work. Well, they can do show diff, but it doesn't really help for development. And it doesn't have really nice merge support. So when you create a feature branch or a release branch, when you want to try to tr uh, track changes and then merge things around, it's a little bit hard to do that. 
Um, you might know that SVK kind of fixes problem, but we're, we're talking about different problem today. So, oh, by the way, who here uses SVK? Who loves SVK? Who hates SVK? Who wrote SVK? <laughs> hey, computer, yes. <laughs> so, what we're talking today problem is the internet isn't really as fast as we thought. Well, maybe not, that's not true in Japan, but still, it might not be as reliable as we want it to be. And there can be earthquakes. <laughs> so remember a couple of months ago, uh, there was an earthquake in Taiwan that pretty much break down the Southeast Asian internet. Uh, so a lot of companies in, uh, who have de development branches in uh, like Thailand or places around here actually like got their office connect completely cut off from the internet and then all routed through like really slow, stupid satellite in internet. So which is like people start saying, oh, right, internet, hmm, maybe we should deal with that. So you might know the subversion motto is basically saying network is expensive and disks are cheap. So we would use a lot of disk to store things. So it cuts down the network transaction. So basically, for example, we mentioned that you can do SVN diff when you're offline. It's basically because when you do SVN checkout, it stores a complete copy of the base text you, of your files, which means you have twice the amount of data on your disk, right? Hmm, these are cheap. So, um, but actually we think network disk CPU are all cheap. It's cheap anyway. Developers are quite expensive. So if you have the developer there not being able to actually commit anything, just sitting around, it's a little bit more expensive than buying a couple more CPU or buying more bandwidth. So why it all matters? Like, um, so people are spending lots of time on tools rather than actual development. So where the, the tool actually gets in the way of your development, such as when you do a SVN commit, takes five minutes and then tells you, oh, there's a com uh, conflict, you have to do update first. And update takes another 10 minutes, just commit again, three minutes maybe, and basically 20 minutes gone and you're just trying to check in your change, which is quite wrong and we should probably see if we can do something about it. Single point failure is bad, of course, so when your master repository, subversion repository is done, then you, can do, you, you can't commit, or your internet is done, you can't commit. So all your developer will, will be unable to produce things, which is really, really bad. So we create a little bit of software. Hmm. Well, is this a cut off or? Where's my cursor? <laughs> it's here. Ah, here we go. Ah, I see. Huh? Right. <laughs> Oops. Sorry, I haven't been using Mac for a long time. Ah, it's here. What should I do? No, there's no way to try it. Track it. It becomes a window without. Ah, software. I hate software, by the way. Yeah, it was full screen. So oh, wait, where's the dock? I don't know. <laughs> it's what? not my laptop. Ah. You see, he's just trying to destroy my work. <laughs> right. Oh no. What's going on? Can we, can we reopen it anyway? Yeah. How? Where is it? Where is that? I want it too. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, so it's not live demo, but why is this? Maybe you shouldn't demo anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you mean including my talk? Hmm. Oops. Oops. Right. <sighs> okay. Uh, but I don't know where the file is. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, and? Yeah, if you can. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm 
Oh, you you mirrored it. Why did you mirror no, it? No, I'm not mirroring it. Okay. Uh, what's it? Uh, Okay. You see, software is hateful. Yes, software is evil. <laughs> so sorry for the trouble. So sorry for the horrible Macintosh. Where were you? Where were I? Mm. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, and so you're. Is it okay to not have the. Yeah. Okay. So, um, sorry. So we developed a little bit tool, a, a tiny tool called Bushme, which actually create replicates of uh, your repository that serve, you can serve that as a normal subversion repository. So as you can, as you might know that you can use SVK to solve the problem. You, you can't commit offline. You can't uh, create a You can use that to create a local mirror. But this is spatial because it's transparent to the users. They just have to switch to a repository that's close by. So, which means there's no change to your existing process and infrastructure. Um, it will be even more transparent if you do a DNS hack to resolve like svn.your company to the local repository. Sounds too good to be true. Anyone got see the problem here? Yes? Okay, so they, they're gonna out of sync when what? The master and the, the slave gets, gets commit at the same time. Right? How do we solve this problem? So, like you have mirrors of this repository in three different places, and the master repository itself, and you have four repositories. How do you how, how do you keep them in sync? And how do you prevent things to be committed to different slave repository and the master at the same time to make sure they have the exact replicate of each other? The answer is we don't. <laughs> Seriously. So all the commits are relayed back to the master. And basically, it, it's, sim it's, it's similar to how mancached works because you basically buffers all the read, and it actually helps a lot when you have a, uh, a size of repository, which I will give an example about later. Um, so it's essentially as a user, when the user is reading, it's from the local mirror, but when they're committing, it's being related to the master. So it's just like the user is committing directly to the master. And of course, the master repository is keeping a transaction safe environment for all the commits and it will guarantee a certain order of the things. And then uh, push me will do some little massage to the uh, slave repository and then make it ready to accept the local commit as a, a mirror of the latest revision. Okay. So, um, here's how it looks like. It's a little bit too small. Right. Err. Right, resolution. So here's, imagine, two computers. <laughs> Those are the developers. They can use direct access to the master repository, right? But if we set up a mirror side repository there using Pushme in the branch office, uh, which is close to developers, they can use the repository here directly. And what Pushme does is basic, basically having a cron job to, 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 ha to have the master repository's new revisions being mirrored down to um, the mirror repository. And when the user tries to commit, that's actually a pre-commit hook that makes use of the SVK API to replay the transaction back to the master. And if it works, then we prepare the repository to be ready to accept the commit locally. So the subversion client will think, oh, we actually committed to the local repository, yay. And the user will be just like, as if they're committed to the master. What if it fails? Like when someone is committing at the same time, which wins the transaction, uh, got, in, got it into the repository first. Um, what will happen is the pre-commit hood, when the pre-commit hood tries to commit to the master repository by replaying the transaction locally, um, it, will, it will fail with a message saying like your conflict and blah, blah, blah. So what we'll do is at the same time, we sync the mirror side repository, the slave, up to um, the latest revision of the repository and basically tell the user, oh, you should update and try to commit again. And by that time, you already have the latest revision of, of the, um, the master here. So when the user actually tried to update, they say, okay, yeah, maybe I'm just unlucky, someone just committed. And so when they commit again, it will go through. So that's the basic two scenarios. Um, 
So as you can see, um, this is actually using a pool model for now. We're trying to like having a cron drop and then having things pushed over. Um, but uh, we actually plan for a more active uh, synchronization mechanism, having um, <coughs> excuse me, having a, a little daemon sitting here and then push change over to um, the, the the slaves. And so in that way, we can eliminate the um, the delays between um, the master and the slave. Oh, so slide. Never mind. Okay. Right. So let's go case study. So. There's a company which is um, quite famous in the game industry came to us and say, hey, we really like Subversion, but it's really slow. Can you do something to it? So we take a look at the requirement saying, okay. Um, so they have 70 offices around the world. One, rep one repository, right? Well, basically, um, a lot of repository on the same server. So their branches office including places like Beijing, Saigo, and some other places with worse network. And so, also, as they do game, they, they have lots of uh, graphics they does. So the files are quite large, and the repository grows quite fast. So a lot of the time, users are waiting for SVN update, because when they try to commit or update a graph, uh, graph, graph file, um, it says, OK, you can't do that. You have to do update first. So a lot of time, they spend um, waiting on update to finish so they can commit. But essentially, you're thinking, hey, hang on a second. If I have 10 persons in, uh, 10 people in the office trying to update. Are they not trying to retrieve the same data? Maybe you can do some caching. So this is what I wrote back after uh, doing, uh, deploying uh, PushMe. So, um, so like places with 90 users, hmm, I took this symbol saying it's 10, but they have 90 in some places. And the connection is only two megabit. Um, and the latency is uh, 300 something milliseconds. And repository is four gig. And normal checkouts has 300 meg. Hmm, you think that make a difference? I actually asked them, um, can you have, do you have some figures for the bandwidth save or something? They say, no, 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 bandwidth is consumed by other things. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, in summary, uh, deploying push meet eliminated some, some uh, latencies, uh, which is more than 200 milliseconds for uh, many of the repository they have. And for the read only operations, it's really, really cool. Um, the, the thing is, when Subversion designed their protocol, they're not very careful. Well, they are, but to some extent. But what they do is a lot of the operation in Subversion are latency bound. So basically, consider talking over a satellite phone, and you're waiting for my answer, which has a latency, and waiting for your answer to answer. answer, answer. So this conversa conversation is actually not bandwidth bound, but latency bound. So using uh, PushMe in the local office actually has very, very visible improvement to that. And the commit performance is only slightly slower because we have to buffer out the transaction and replay it. But when you have your, your bandwidth free for commit only, then it's actually, you don't feel it. And the, the best thing is when the master repository or the VPN is done, um, you, can, you can still work on the repository, uh, like checking out or update to previous revisions, reading logs, and uh, generating patch. Or if you use SVK, you can still commit offline. and then and then perform the merge later when the master repository is back online. So, they're quite happy. Are you? <laughs> Sorry, I should say it's open source. Uh, it's available on codefast.com and we do support and consultancy. Right, questions? Yes. Thank you, Phil. Um, so um, I've been using SVK for a while uh, where the way I do it is, it's hard to explain, rather than working offline ever, I operate directly on the mirror copy so that commits are pushed back immediately. How is this different than that? So the question is, oh, do I have to repeat? You have a microphone. I'll do it anyway. So the question is, when you use SVK, you can choose to work on the mirror pass directly so you don't create a local branch. So when you commit, it, it actually behaves just like SVN that commits back to the repository. So um, you, can, you can consider push me as some um, bits of SVK being put on the server side for you. So, um, so your read will be really fast. So the reason you will use SVK locally with uh, the mirror 
working on the mirror pass is probably because you have constant connection, but you really want the, the read operations to be faster, like just reading a log and doing SVM blend or something like that. Oh, okay. Right. So if you do that for the branch, of course, then um, the layer we put here for the, the server side doesn't really handle the, the, the merging bit. So you will still need to use SVK for, for that. But we do have some plans to put some SVK, more SVK code on the server side that uh, you can perform merges over a web interface or something. So for example, a certain company called Apple, they have some weird uh, development policy like each bug has to have its own branch. Consider how hard it will be with CVS. So, um, so some of them use SVK. So basically, the developers like create the branch and da la 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 and tell the merge master or the release manager, say, okay, I'm ready to merge. So the developer are not allowed to, to, to perform merge themselves. There has to be a merge, merge uh, master to do, to do the merge. So we were thinking about having some UI on the server side that you can actually say, okay, they say this is ready, and then maybe hook up with some automatic re regression test and stuff like that. あの、時間となりましたんですけども、えっ、ー、と、あと10分ぐらいでライティントークが始まります。で、もっと質問したい方、ぜひぜひ、ガンガン質問してあげてください。So the lightning talks are going to start in 10 minutes upstairs, but there's no reason to stop the questions. People that want to mill about and go to the lightning talks. Oh, wait, no, I'm smoking crack. <laughs> <laughs> すいません、すごく間違えたんです。I was so excited about the lightning talks.、Um, it's a 10 minute break. Never mind, keep asking questions. ごめんなさい、すごい間違いじゃったんです。まだ10分あります。あの休憩時間がありますんで、あのガンガン質問してあげてください。Yes. Um, so the network round trip SBM protocol makes. Um, so I have a very bad example, but it's already the past. So when you do an SBM update. What it does is basically it describes the, the structure of the change. So basically you say, oh, here's a new directory being added, here's the file being added, here's a file being deleted, and things like that. So it's, it's a report, a request, and a response to the report request describing the structure of change. So what SVN used to do is basically um, having the structure of the change including, um, not including the full text of the changes in between. So the text delta are being referred to another URL. So basically you read the chunk of change, okay, we know like three files are added and, and the file uh, delete, being deleted. And now we make requests to see what are the content of the changes for three files. Urgh, silly. So I think I fixed it uh, a while ago. So it's, it's all in line now. So it's a huge big uh, response that has everything in line and it can be streamy. Yeah, that, that's one of the sample I can think of now, but apparently fixed. But there are more. <laughs> あと何か質問ありましたら。通訳お願いします。<笑>えっと。リポジトリのミラーリングだけじゃなくて。バグトラッキングのミラーリングもあるとありがたいんですけれども。つまり。えっと、バグナンバーを、その。インターネットコネクションがないときにも見たい、あるいは、その。まあ、コメントをどんどんトラックナンバーに入れてきたい時期があるんですけどそういう機能をこの先作っていく予定はないですか SVK にそういうのがあると嬉しいな。So he's、um, talking about the case where there is stuff outside of the source that you'd also like to have version control on and strict control over you know, what you have, or strong presence of like, what version of information you're looking at. One of the cases would be bug tracking, looking at bug numbers, looking at the comments that are in that repository. Is there any Um, plan to add that kind of functionality to SVK? Well, so in Subversion, there are、uh, free form properties that you can add. I think I know some commercial software do that. But,、um, but what we've done with SVK and RT is basically an integration. A, when you commit, you can say this actually closed a certain bug. So we will link back to、um, the ticketing system and things like that. So Subversion provides like Very generic, gen generic hooks that you can invoke different scripts on. So you can actually do the integration for different bug tracking systems and stuff like that. Uh, basically, just 
property、um, files or directories or anything? I know. そのサーブルーの中でもそのプロパティというものがあってでフリーフォームだからもう好きな形でもえとまあ入稿ができるんですよでそういうものを使ってあのまあ自前開発になっちゃうんですけどもそういう機能を使ってかつあの SVK にさまざまなフックがありますのでそれでまあお好きなスクリプトとか好きなものを走らせることが割と簡単にできますそういうふうに実装することができますよと。Questions? He might have answers. He probably has answers.、Oh. <laughs> so I, I'm wondering what do you see as the, of the advantage of using subversion over like one of the new cool revision control systems like Darks and Mercurial and Git and all that stuff? Why, why don't you just tell people to switch to that instead of sticking with subversion? Well, I don't have a, a well, I don't have a, a, a like a very strong idea about like what other people should use, but I like to use my tool. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I would be happy if people use my tool and I give feedback. But you know, if, you, if you've seen the SPK talk, you, you might notice we actually still start from very different systems, such as, such as Perforce and Darks. So if there's a good feature, we assimilate that, just like Pro 6. I did. Do you want to translate that?、Huh? Oh, okay, never mind. So, one thing that was mentioned is、uh, we've been hacking on some weird plugin in Jifty that's actually trying to use the SDK、uh, sync and, mirror,、uh, and merge algorithms between different Jifty installations, which will al eventually allow you to have like, an offline. Application that you can、uh, make changes to it and then sync back online. But it's very experimental. I plan to hack on it on Hackathon、uh, this weekend. So if you're interested, 